Israel keeping up its offensive against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, but Hezbollah is proving to be a formidable foe in a limited ground war just across the border. The terror group firing hundreds of rockets and using guerrilla warfare tactics, mounting the most military challenge or the largest military challenge that Israel has faced in a long time. Joining us now is Major Rick Rona. He is an assistant professor at the U.S. Military Academy's Combating Terrorism Center at West Point. Good to have you with us today, Major. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having me, Martha. You've said that, that you think that Israel is going to have a tough time in the long run defeating Hezbollah militarily, and yet we hear from a lot of military that Israel has such an overwhelming force that they would certainly be able to do so. Well, I think first of all you have to look at what Israel's done up to this point, uh, unrestricted air war warfare for 15 days about, uh, with limited ground incursions, and they haven't stopped the missiles at all. Uh, yesterday there were reports of missiles between 130 and 150 hitting Israel, and today Fox was just reporting 87 missiles. Uh, Israel does have the military capability to do it. I don't know if it has the political will to do it. Yesterday, the Israeli cabinet got together and they decided that they were not going to increase the tempo of operations in Lebanon, and especially not the ground operations. And as the Israeli army has pointed out, the ground operations are what are needed to reduce the rocket threat. So until we see an increase in those ground operations, I don't think we're going to see a reduction in the number of rockets and missiles coming from Hezbollah. And why do you think there is not the willingness to do that, to, to go further and as some have suggested, there are, you know, towns like Marun Aras and Bin Jabal that go all the way up to Beirut. Well, I think, there, I think there's two points to remember. First of all is Israel's experience in Lebanon um, after 1982, specifically 1982 to 2000, where they were fighting a guerrilla insurgency against Hezbollah, and Israel decided to withdraw in 2000. And Hezbollah and a large part of the Arab world saw that as a victory. The second reason that I've seen reported in particularly the Israeli media is that Israel is concerned about a Syrian response right now. Uh, it is fighting in Lebanon. It doesn't want to have to deal also with a Syrian response and the geopolitics that go behind that. And it feels that if it goes as far as it needs to go, or if it goes as far as the Israeli army thinks it needs to go, to the Latani River, that the Syrians will begin to mobilize against the Israelis. And it just goes on and on and on and on, I guess. Very I mean, how, how do you, how, how do you defeat Hezbollah if you don't, uh, you know, sort of do everything that it takes? Well, I don't think defeating Hezbollah is a military solution, it's a political solution. And it, uh, the answer really lies with the Lebanese Shia. You have to either convince the Lebanese Shia, which are about 40% of the Lebanese population, that they cannot support Hezbollah because of the pain that it is causing them, or you have to give them different incentives. Uh, people tend to forget that Hezbollah is not only a military organization, it's not only a terrorist organization like we consider it in the United States, it's also a social, political, and an economic movement. And it has provided a lot of support to the Lebanese Shia, particularly in southern Lebanon. And if we don't give the Lebanese Lebanese Shia an, an alternative to that economic, political, and social support, I don't think you're going to be able to defeat Hezbollah. All right, real quickly, uh, you know, all of the missiles that we've seen, and many of them are said to have come from Iran, how did they get from Iran into Lebanon without the UN forces that are in that border area detecting them? Uh, the, the UN forces have been there since 1978, but they are a very, very small force, force with a very specific mandate. Uh, it's generally attributed to Syria and that Iran has uh, used Syria or Syria has allowed Iran to transport missiles and other weapons uh, through Syrian airspace and ground space and specifically through Damascus to get them to Hezbollah. Mm. Very interesting look at a complex situation. Major Rick Rona, thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having me. All right. Uh, the fighting in the